Hello and welcome to what will be a new series of videos on reptiles brought to you by myself, Mark Perpetua from Reptile Encounters and Hudson Valley Reptile and Rescue. Today's video, we want to focus on some of the native snakes found throughout the Hudson Valley and talk about some of the ways to identify them so you know what kind of snake it is you're running into. Our first friend is actually just a tiny little baby. This is a northern water snake. He's gonna to grow to be about 40 inches long. And at full size, they can be intimidating and they're often misunderstood. One of the things that sometimes people think they are is a cottonmouth or the famous water moccasins. But water moccasins are southeastern snakes. We do not have them living here in New York State. The other snake that they're sometimes confused with is the copperhead. As babies, they start out this gray and black color, but as it grows, that color is going to change more to browns with reddish tints through it. And while it does have some brown, it's not truly copper. It even has banding like copperheads do. But one of the things I want to show you today is an actual copperhead so we can figure out how to identify one of the most infamous venomous snakes throughout the Hudson Valley. So here is our live copperhead. Uh, and when I use the word infamous, it's because everybody who runs into a snake because they can't properly identify them, they're worried about one of the most commonly seen venomous snakes in the Hudson Valley. They think it might be a copperhead. But often it's like I said, water snakes, milk snakes, which are easily distinguishable. I've even been called to a piece of property where when I got there, it turned out to be the most common of all, the garter snake. But if you look at a copperhead, it's clearly evident how they got their name. It is a snake with a coppery color on its head. It's a bright orangey copper color similar to a new penny. But just like pennies can, uh, can tarnish and age and darken, so can copperheads. They're Sometimes when they're getting ready to shed and sometimes when they get older, their head can be darker and not quite as bright as coppery a color. So the other key feature you want to see is the banding pattern. Their banding pattern is very specific. They have what is basically a, a hourglass shape of banding. If you take a look at the bands of a copperhead, you will notice that the dark bands are narrow on the back and they're very wide along the side. And not only are they wide, they do not taper in a straight line like those of the water snake we just saw. The copperheads have rounded edges on their bands, giving them that hourglass design. Those are the telltale signs of knowing what a true copperhead looks like. Now, there are a few other things that were always brought up in the old field guides, like looking at the shape of their eyes. Since they are pit vipers, they do have elliptical pupils. And because it's a pit viper, it does have the heat sensing pit organs in the front of its face. But if you're not a snake person and you're not accustomed to handling venomous snakes, you probably don't want to get that close to the face of a snake that you don't know what kind it is. One last thing that I've heard a lot of in the myths over the years is they smell like cucumbers. Many snakes can do what's called musking. And this snake right here, he's very used to people, as you can tell. He was raised in captivity, and uh, he's not musking. But I've worked with other copperheads that do musk, and it does not smell like anything I'd ever want to put on one of my salads. So don't go sniffing through the woods on your next hike thinking that the smell of cucumber means there's copperheads around. It might just mean that you're close to somebody's garden. Another well-known snake in the Hudson Valley area is often referred to as the black snake. But the truth is we have two species of snakes that are traditionally black as adults in our region. One is called the black racer and the other one that I'm handling right here is the black rat snake. Now the black rat snake is actually our largest snake in this area growing up to about eight feet in length. More typically, you're going to see them somewhere between five to six feet in length. But as adults, 
they're all black. This particular guy is a juvenile. He is a younger snake. And when they first hatch out, they are gray with dark markings. This snake is going through the color changes as it grows and will eventually grow into an adult after a few more sheds that is almost uniformly black. These guys are non-venomous and they are constrictors. So it's an animal that feeds on birds, their eggs, and lots and lots of rodents. In fact, a lot of people find them beneficial because they help keep the rodent population down. But it's another snake, especially when it's younger and hasn't grown into its black color morph, that can confuse you when you're little, lot, or when it's little. Lots of snakes will shake their tail when they get nervous. Not only the rat snakes of this area, but also the milk snakes. And I've been called many, many times by people thinking, baby rattlesnake on their property. So uh, that's not what they're doing. It's not a baby rattlesnake that hasn't grown its rattle. Uh, also, black rat snakes have been known for many, many years to share hibernating dens called hibernaculums with, uh, with venomous snakes like copperheads and rattlers. And there's been a long lasting myth that is definitely not true that black rat snakes are interbreeding with copperheads, making a venomous snake that we can't identify because we're not used to it. Their biology is too far apart. Rat snakes and copperheads cannot interbreed. There are no venomous black rat snakes in New York State. But I do have our native rattlesnake to our area. Let me go ahead and put the rat snake back and we'll take a look at our native timber rattlesnake. All right, so here it is. This is our native rattlesnake to the Northeast. It is the timber rattlesnake, and they can be found in the Hudson Valley region, but they like higher elevations. Timber rattlesnakes are snakes that spend their time up in the mountain regions, not down low in the valley. We're filming right now from Sorgates, New York, Elser County, and there are timber rattler populations living at Overlook Mountain in Woodstock. Uh, they live uh, near Hunter Mountain, but not, again, far down south. These are animals, uh, even Mohawk Mountain is another area, Schwangunks, where timber rattlers have their populations. They are amazing snakes, but listen to that rattle while he's got it going. This is a snake that's telling me right now he doesn't want to be disturbed. But as close as I am, I'm like within almost two feet, he's not lunging at me. He's not being aggressive at all. So this snake is a little used to people. I'll give him that. But he doesn't like being handled yet. He's still got a little ways to go where he calms down and drops that rattling attitude. The point of bringing that up is to point out that if you are in one of these areas hiking, you might see a sign at the trailhead that said timber rattlesnakes are located in this area. Stay on the trails. Don't go out into the grass or the, the leafy areas because, as you can see, his coloration is going to give him good camouflage. And what you're going to hear is that rattle. That's him telling you, get back on the trail. He doesn't want to chase you. He doesn't want to attack you. And he's certainly not going to bite you unless you actually touch him first. So staying on the trails are really important in rattlesnake areas. And like I said, we do have them in New York. And people, hundreds and thousands of people hike these areas every season safely. And many of them will tell me how exciting it is to see a timber rattler and get some really cool pictures. They're really much, uh, much less offensive than people actually think they are. Uh, as far as their coloration, as I mentioned, this guy's got a beautiful chocolate color. I've seen them greenish to yellowish to brownish. And there's even a color phase that's all black. So the telltale sign that you're dealing with a rattlesnake is going to be that rattle. So a little earlier, we mentioned uh, that the rat snakes and milk snakes will sometimes shake their tail when they're afraid as well. And you can imagine now that you heard the sound, if you put them in a forested area, that, that tail vibrating quickly against the dead leaves can produce a very similar startling sound, not only to a human, but a possible would-be predator. Uh, coyotes, raccoons, even skunks will eat small snakes, birds of prey, all kinds of challenges that these animals have out in the wild. And it gives you a better understanding as why they get defensive, but not aggressive. 
Also want to point out that timber rattlesnakes are a protected species. So if you are on those state lands and hiking trails and you run into one, don't think you're doing anybody a favor by getting rid of a venomous snake. They control rodent populations and because they are threatened in our state, their populations are protected and you should never try to handle or harm a native timber rattlesnake while you're visiting uh, one of our trails here in New York State. So hopefully uh, you get a better understanding of what these animals are all about. Get an introduction to what some of our more popularly known snakes look like here in the area. New York State throughout the entire state is home to 17 different species of snakes and we've only highlighted just a few. So uh, keep an eye out for more of our videos in the future and thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy. Leave some comments. Let us know.